Could we survive on Mars? Imagine standing on the dusty red surface of the red planet, looking up at a sky filled with distant stars. No oxygen to breathe, temperatures colder than you've ever felt, and a world so different from Earth. Everyone thinks it is impossible, right? But what if I told you that one day humans could actually live on Mars? From growing food to building homes and protecting ourselves from deadly radiation, colonizing Mars would be the ultimate test of human ingenuity. But how can we possibly overcome these huge challenges? Ever wondered what's up there that we can't see? I'm Umbra, and I'll reveal it all. Keep watching. Compared to the moon, Mars is a whole different challenge. It's farther, more dangerous, and more complicated. But this hasn't stopped countries and companies from working hard to make Mars colonization a reality. Scientists like Brendan Owens, an astronomer and author, are already looking into the difficulties that come with sending humans to Mars. They're examining everything from travel time to the resources we'll need to survive. So, let's take a closer look at these challenges. The journey to Mars. How long would it take? Let's start with the journey itself. How long would it take to get from Earth to Mars? Well, right now, with our current technology, the answer isn't exactly quick. A trip to the moon takes about three days. But a mission to Mars? That would take much longer. We're talking about anywhere from six to nine months, depending on the positions of Earth and Mars when the mission takes off. That's months of travel in deep space, away from everything we know. Imagine being in a spaceship, floating through space with only your crewmates for company, and no way to return home anytime soon. It's a very different story than the brief moon missions, which lasted only about 12 days. And the challenges don't stop there. Once astronauts arrive on Mars, they will be facing even more difficulties. Without a natural day and night cycle like Earth, their bodies would have to adapt to a new rhythm. But it doesn't end there. They'll also deal with muscle wastage and bone density loss because of Mars' weaker gravity, not to mention the mental strain of being so far from Earth. No family, no friends, just the crew and the harsh environment of Mars. Traveling to Mars, the physical challenges. Let's talk about the physical challenges of traveling to Mars. Once astronauts leave Earth's atmosphere, they will be exposed to something we don't usually have to worry about here, radiation. Right now, astronauts on the International Space Station, ISS, experience radiation levels about 250 times higher than those on Earth. For a Mars mission, the radiation levels would increase even further, making long-duration space travel even riskier. This is one of the main concerns for human missions to Mars. In deep space, there's no magnetic field to protect astronauts from harmful radiation like we have on Earth. The effects of long-term radiation exposure are still not fully understood, but we do know that it can increase the risk of cancer and other health problems. To study this, NASA and the European Space Agency ESA, have been conducting long-term studies on astronauts. One notable experiment involved twins Scott and Mark Kelly. One stayed on Earth while the other spent a year aboard the ISS. This experiment allowed scientists to compare how space travel affected their health. The results showed changes in Scott's gene expression and DNA, including a lengthening of his telomeres, which could have long-term health consequences. The psychological challenges. How will we cope? Physical health isn't the only concern for Mars travelers. The mental challenges are just as important. Imagine being alone in space, far from home, for years at a time. There's no one to talk to except for your fellow astronauts. You won't be able to see your family, friends, or even the blue sky for years. How would that affect your mind? To better understand these challenges, scientists have conducted simulations of Mars missions right here on Earth. In one of the most well-known studies, Mars 500, six participants lived in a mock Mars habitat for 17 months, experiencing isolation and confinement similar to a real Mars mission. They faced long communication delays, with messages taking up to 20 minutes to travel each way between Earth and their simulated Mars base. Interestingly, despite the intense isolation, the crew managed to work together well. They celebrated holidays like Chinese New Year and Halloween to keep their spirits up. But there were also challenges. The lack of natural sunlight led to disrupted sleeping patterns, and over time, the crew started to feel more tired and less focused. These experiments show that mental health will be a major issue for Mars missions, and strategies will need to be developed to help astronauts cope with the isolation. How could humans survive on Mars? So, how can humans survive on Mars? This is where things get interesting. The first crew to land on Mars is unlikely to step foot directly on the surface right away. Instead, they may first deploy equipment and supplies from orbit to set up a safe landing site. One idea is to build an orbital space station before sending humans down to Mars. From this space station, astronauts could control robots on the surface to help with the construction of habitats and other necessary infrastructure. 
NASA has already practiced these techniques on the ISS through projects like the Meteoron Project, which allowed astronauts to operate robots on Earth from space. Once astronauts finally arrive, they'll need to focus on securing the necessities – air, water, food, and shelter. Mars has a thin atmosphere made mostly of carbon dioxide, which is no good for breathing. So, humans will need to extract oxygen from Mars' atmosphere using a process called in situ resource utilization. NASA has already tested a small device on Mars called MOXIE, Mars Oxygen ISRU Experiment, which can convert carbon dioxide into oxygen. This is just the first step, but in the future, such technology could help provide oxygen for small Mars habitats. Water is another critical resource. While there's no liquid water on the Martian surface, scientists have found water ice beneath the surface and at the polar ice caps. One challenge, however, is that the water ice on Mars is mixed with toxic chemicals, so it would need to be filtered and purified before it's safe to drink. Scientists are also looking into ways of using water to produce fuel for rockets, which could help reduce the need for constant supply shipments from Earth. Growing food on Mars. Can we feed ourselves? One of the biggest challenges for long-term survival on Mars is growing food. Right now, astronauts on the International Space Station rely on prepackaged food that can last for months or even years. However, a mission to Mars could take years, and sending all the food needed for the journey is not practical. So, how can we feed astronauts on Mars? The solution is to grow food in greenhouses. NASA has been testing ways to grow plants in space using hydroponics, a method of growing plants without soil. These greenhouses would need to be placed inside pressurized habitats, protecting the plants from the harsh conditions outside. The Martian atmosphere is very thin and lacks oxygen, and temperatures often drop as low as minus 100 degrees Celsius, minus 148 degrees Fahrenheit. But inside these greenhouses, plants could be grown under artificial light and a controlled environment. Scientists have already experimented with growing crops in simulated Martian soil on Earth. In one experiment, NASA grew radishes and lettuce using soil similar to Martian soil, and the results were promising. However, growing food on Mars will require a lot of resources – energy to power the lights, water for irrigation, and nutrients for the plants. We'll also need to think about recycling. Waste from the astronauts, including food scraps, could be used to fertilize the plants and help them grow. In the future, astronauts may need to live off a diet of space-grown crops like potatoes, carrots, and leafy greens. But until then, they will rely on a mix of prepackaged food and any crops they can grow on Mars. Shelter – Building a Safe Home on Mars When you think about life on Mars, one of the first things that comes to mind is shelter. Mars is not a friendly place for humans. The atmosphere is thin, with no breathable air, and the surface is bombarded with radiation from the sun. Astronauts will need a safe, protective habitat to survive. But what kind of shelter can we build on Mars? One possibility is to build habitats using Martian resources. This concept is called in situ resource utilization, ISRU, and it means using the materials available on Mars to build homes. For example, Martian soil, also known as regolith, could be used to create bricks or concrete for building habitats. The idea is to 3D print structures or use robotic construction machines to assemble buildings from the local materials, avoiding the need to transport everything from Earth. The habitats would need to be airtight to keep breathable air inside and resistant to the harsh Martian environment. They would also need to be shielded from radiation. One proposal is to use water as a protective barrier. By surrounding the habitats with a thick layer of water or ice, astronauts could shield themselves from harmful radiation. This could also help keep the interior of the habitat warm since Mars is very cold. NASA is also testing inflatable habitats that could be easily transported and inflated on Mars. These structures are lightweight and compact for easy transport, but can expand into large living spaces once deployed. Once inflated, the habitats would be covered with Martian soil or other materials to protect them from radiation and extreme temperatures. These habitats would need to be safe, comfortable, and self-sustaining. They would need systems to recycle air, water, and waste, and astronauts would have to live in a closed-loop environment where resources are carefully managed. The future of Mars colonization. How will this change life on Earth? Mars colonization isn't just about sending a handful of astronauts to another planet. It has the potential to change life on Earth in ways we can't yet fully imagine. The technologies developed for Mars missions could have wide-reaching effects on industries here on Earth, from space exploration to renewable energy and even agriculture. 
For instance, the advancements in water purification and resource recycling could help solve some of the problems we face on Earth, like water scarcity and waste management. The research into sustainable farming methods could also be applied to help feed growing populations in regions that struggle with food security. Another exciting possibility is the development of new energy sources. On Mars, solar energy will be the primary source of power, as there are no fossil fuels to rely on. By perfecting solar power and other renewable energy technologies on Mars, we could help accelerate the transition to clean energy on Earth. And of course, the biggest change might be human exploration and expansion. Colonizing Mars would show us that humans can live and work on another planet. This could pave the way for future exploration of other planets, moons, and perhaps even deep space. The long road ahead, when will we get there? While we've made incredible strides in space exploration, there's still a long road ahead before we can send humans to Mars. NASA's current target for a human mission is set for the late 2030s or early 2040s. However, this timeline depends on technological advancements, funding, and international cooperation. Companies like SpaceX, led by Elon Musk, are pushing the envelope even further. Musk's goal is to establish a self-sustaining colony on Mars within the next few decades. SpaceX is developing the Starship, a massive spacecraft designed to carry humans to Mars and other destinations in space. While there are still many hurdles to overcome, SpaceX is making progress, and their timeline could be more ambitious than NASA's. For now, we can only watch and wait as new technologies, robots, and missions take us closer to our goal of reaching Mars. Who knows? In just a few decades, it might be possible to have regular missions to Mars and maybe even a thriving colony on the Red Planet. Surviving on Mars will require overcoming massive challenges, from long-duration space travel and radiation exposure to growing food and building safe habitats. But with the determination of scientists, engineers, and astronauts, we might one day see humans not just visit Mars, but live there permanently. The dream of Mars colonization is no longer a far-off fantasy. It's becoming a reality, step by step. As we continue to learn and innovate, Mars could one day be our second home. And with every milestone we reach, we're not just pushing the boundaries of space exploration. We're redefining what's possible for humanity's future. Thanks for joining me on this journey to Mars. If you're excited about the idea of living on the Red Planet, make sure to visit my channel for more videos on space exploration, science, and the future of humanity in space.